Yeah, I've you know I've I've been a big fan of Barry Jenkins for a little while now. So for me, it was everything to be able to to be in front of his lens and and you know for him to direct us. Um, what an incredible storyteller! What a what a, a visionary! You know, I think that he has a unique eye for for love, for passion, um, and for relaying messages that you know seemingly seem. Um, you know, daring and revolutionary in a way um, to tackle these stories that, you know, we never really get seen told for the for the screen. So it was a special thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, all of that. <laughs> um, but, you know, then getting to work with him, you know, on the set, um, it was just, I'm so thankful that, you know, my introduction to film was working with a director who's so patient. Um, and I think patient with everyone, you know, who's a part of, you know, bringing the film together. So it gives us that room and, and that safety to, you know, try new things, explore, make mistakes. Um, and I think that's one of the, I don't know, most special things about working with Barry. Cool. Um, the film is based on James Baldwin's famous 1974 novel of the same name. How familiar were you both with Baldwin's work when you agreed to be a part of the project? I knew Baldwin as um, as an activist and as a, as a poet. Um, I, I had never read any of his novels, but after reading the screenplay, of course, I went back and, and read the novel and was just blown away by it. Um, you know, and I was, I was blown away by the script, but <laughs> it's crazy because the novel just had so much more. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, you just realize what a what a brilliant man he was, and just how timeless his his messages were, and and how much of a beautiful descriptor of, of pain he was and tragedy, but also love at the, at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wasn't familiar with uh, any of his novels. I was just familiar with, you know, online content, like interviews and, and speeches. Um, but once I got to read, you know, read the script and read the book, I was blown away, you know, by how it's this beautiful, beautiful love story. But because it's Baldwin, you know, he is going to speak the truth about some really, you know, real issues, you know, real, you know, things about mass incarceration, racial injustice, you know, all of these things, um, and his ability to weave those things together, I thought made this story, you know, so special. Uh, why is Baldwin's material still relevant today? I mean, it's no secret, really, <laughs> that issues of mass incarceration, issues of false imprisonment and having, um, you know, having the lives and loves of, of, you know, black people in this country threatened almost on a, on a daily basis. Um, and it's just sort of unfortunate that, you know, Baldwin wrote this in 1974 and we're still talking about this in 2018, but that's why it's important that a film like this is coming out now at a time like this. I mean, <laughs> everything that he said. I'm gonna let you answer first now. <laughs> <laughs> Your question. <laughs> there are many things in the film ranging from love to injustice to grief. What is it that you hope audience members take away from seeing If Beale Street Could Talk? Um, I mean, I, I hope that they really receive all of, you know, all of the love that's in the film and recognize the strength, you know, that lies in all of that love. Um, but then also see, you know, these two fictional characters these are real people. There are real Fannies out there. There are real Tishes out there. So then to also, you know, recognize that these people, you know, in these situations who are so often reduced to just uh, to statistics are, you know, real people who love and, and are loved too. Um, so I hope they think about that. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I think that love um, and hope are probably the biggest messages that Baldwin wanted people to take away from this story. Um, that despite this this tragedy and this struggle that you know African Americans have had to deal with for seemingly hundreds of years, um, that you know we can find peace in the fact that we love each other and and uh, we're going to support each other and you know that's going to be sort of the the thread um, that's going to that's going to help us survive. Cool. Final question. <laughs> What real life situations or people in the news, in literature or film, did you draw on to bring each of your characters' plights to the, to, uh, in the film to life? For me, it was it was uh, Khalif Browder, um, you know, a young man who in 2010 was was uh, charged with petty crime of a backpack, um, you know, petty theft rather of, of a backpack, um, 
And, you know, in order to maintain his innocence, he pleaded not guilty um, and was given three years on Rikers Island, two and a half of which he spent in solitary confinement. And it just boggled my mind that, you know, we had this 16 year old boy in this in this situation, you know, that that a system that is supposed to protect us um, has failed this young man and it's failing so many other young black men across this country and has for years. And, and you know, for me, you know, Khalif's story was only one of, of so many stories. So I just felt like if I could be the voice, the vessel um, to speak for, for these voiceless young men, then, you know, then I was doing my job. And so that, you know, that was probably the biggest motivator in me wanting to play Fani and me wanting to be a part of, of, of this film. Um, you know, I also looked at, you know, Khalif Browder's story, but for me it was more so paying attention to, you know, how that situation affected the people that were left behind, you know, his family and what they were going through as they were fighting, you know, to get him out of there and trying to make sense of something that just, I mean, it was so ridiculous and just so unfair and painful. Um, but then I also, you know, leaned into my personal experiences with my family. Um, and just thinking about, you know, my relationship with my mom and, and my brothers and, you know, what does that love look like and how does that fill me up and, and get me through, you know, uh, just life on a day-to-day. -day. Um, so those are my, I think, my biggest things that I, I pulled from.